Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where you see me releasing the gust lock on the PMDG DC-6 as I get ready for a flight from San Francisco to New York. I also had to top off the fuel there using that pad because even though I put all the fuel in in the main menu, it brought, was brought out to the runway only half full. So I fixed that and then we were ready to go. So this was my longest flight in FS 2020 so far. I did longer flights in FS 9 or an FSX, but this is going to be a cross-country trip and testing the ability of me to keep the PMD GD66 intact. I tried long flights with it a few times, but I met with a variety of issues. Some of them self-induced, some of them just sort of happened, and one of them, the most recent try I did, was actually flying from San Francisco to New York, but around Nebraska-ish, the game just slowed to a crawl. It was like one frame per second. It was just unflyable. And that's saying something for me because I'm used to really low frame rates. I started flying Flight Sims in Flight Sim 4. So it's been a long, long road and I'm used to low frame rates along the way. So yeah, but no, it was just intolerable. So I had to abort that one. And previous to that, there were some issues that were self-induced. <laughs> Uh, one of them was just not switching to the alternate tanks in time. I had set it to autopilot and it was flying merrily and I went on my way uh, up to do other things while it was on autopilot, sorry. This time I was much more attentive as uh, you can see me saying the carburetor air there, uh, checking the pad and yes, this time it was fully monitored. But uh, the previous time I wasn't even recording, I was just trying to fly and that was actually across the Atlantic and I just didn't switch to fuel in time, and so it crashed. So that was that was my fault. Uh, there are various other things. Uh, actually, uh, sometimes, you know how your mouse sort of goes into sleep mode? It mine's is a, a wireless mouse, and it sort of goes into sleep mode, and so the cursor gets hidden, right? And so when I woke up the mouse, uh, I clicked on something, and it turned out to be the fire extinguisher for an engine. And so I lost the engine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, I mean, actually, you can uh, sort of restart them in flight, even if you use the fire extingu extinguisher on them. I found that out later, but uh, at that point, I just decided not to. This flight will not be without mishaps, by the way, as you can see me uh, slowly getting altitude and crossing the San Francisco Bay. And there's Oakland that we're over here. And, yep, there will be issues. Well, one big issue. Uh, we'll get to that. So it's a slow climb to uh, the planned height I wanted to go to is 22,000 feet and uh, that just was what I could tolerate. <laughs> Basically it, it's, a, it's a slow climb I decided 22,000 would be fine. My plan was not to uh, push the range. My plan was to try and get across the country as quickly as I could and so I would be basically guzzling fuel and trying to push the engines as much as possible without breaking them, as usual. And uh, altogether, the time of the flight, I think, ended up being 7 hours and 45 minutes. So, yeah, I am using GPS for navigation, though uh, the heading is actually pretty easy to figure out. And, well, you'll hit New York some way or another. No, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, I turned on the superchargers at about 11,000 feet and we uh, of course throttle back at that point to moderate the manifold pressure and here we are continuing to climb and there I'm turning off the carburetor heat because things seemed okay and I've been managing the, the cowl flaps as well as we do with these airliners, these prop liners of yore. And there it is looking wonderful. If there's anything that we can say about this is it looks wonderful, this plane. Not that complicated really. I mean, it is complicated compared to other planes in flight sim. But you have to keep in consideration that I have also uh, landed in, on the moon in re-entry. And that version of the Apollo Command Module, the checklists are substantial. <laughs> that, that is a challenge. Uh, there are lots of things to flick and buttons to press and a computer to program in re-entry with the Apollo Command Module and that is still more complicated than this uh, in terms of landing on the moon with that and the Lunar Module. 
anyway, here I am getting the all pilot set, but I forgot that you actually have to do the gyro pilot first and then the autopilot and then the altitude control. So I switched that off, turned that on, then back on with the AP autopilot and then here we are stable at 22,000 feet. And the autopilot is really good on this actually. I like simple autopilots more than the complicated ones and this is a simple one. Uh, this one just, just holds the attitude and altitude and that's it. Um, so uh, you, there's actually a turn knob that you can use to turn it, but it doesn't turn to a particular heading. And here I'm trying to see what I can get out of the engines without pushing them too far. Uh, so I'm keeping them in the green. That was that happened around 140 to 150 BMEP. We have some engine wear. This is me uh, messing with the mixture control. Uh, there is apparently an auto rich and auto lean thing that's supposed to happen, but my mixture control actually worked on my. Uh, control levers so I made sure to set it appropriately so it didn't kill everything and since we're gonna hold this out to you that's fine and you'll note that the oil temperatures were reading yellow on the little pad there and that's why I gl glance at the pad too is because if you just look at the gauges the oil temperature doesn't seem to be having any problems it's nowhere near the yellow zone on the actual gauges for oil temp and so uh, and here I'm looking at them there and yeah you can see that the needles are below the yellow zone and certainly below the red zone so I look at the oil temp with the yellow indicators there and I go well okay I think we can tolerate it uh, I think that's just how it's gonna be the engines have had some runs and so they might need some maintenance too so here we are uh, the, bobbing along quite a lot because there was actually a crosswind. It was just directly 90 degrees at us, so that wasn't really helpful. Uh, not helpful at all. But yeah, we uh, sort of managed along, but it did sort of cause us to do this bobbing thing. And there's some nice mountains. Really, I was trying to capture as many nice views as possible. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, uh, when the game reset my fuel to 50%, it also reset the time. I had tried to set the time to early in the morning take off from San Francisco. Instead, it set me at back to real time. And so we will be landing in the dark, unfortunately. So no good scenery in New York. And that sucks, but I decided not to sort of reset the time mid-flight. Nice clouds. So yeah, we will get a sunset though, I guess there is a plus on that. Okay, so just taking a look at the fuel situation because this time I was not going to fail to switch to the alternate tanks, <laughs> right? Uh, we don't want to fail again. That's the little turn knob. That AP turn knob is how you use how you get the autopilot to turn in this because it doesn't hold a heading. So you just manually tell it, okay, bank a little bit. And then once you're done turning, uh, you can set it back to the middle and it'll flatten out again. It's just a wing leveler, really. And yep, it's getting a little bit darker. Oh, we got a rainbow along the way. Uh, this is above the Rocky Mountains right now. So, some of the nice scenery was actually over Nevada. I was really liking Nevada. Uh, I don't normally not like Nevada, but somehow along this path uh, there were some really nice landscapes in Nevada. I mean, I've actually flown above Nevada, not as a pilot, but I've actually been a passenger over Nevada, and I wasn't that impressed, but sorry, Nevadans. But anyway, there you saw me switching the fourth tank to the alternate tank from the main tank, and here we have the second and fourth, and now I switch all of them to the alternate tanks. And yeah, so that's happened, and I've got, I'm looking at the cross feeds there. I had set them to cross feed and I'll actually set them to the next setting, all engines, but uh, they do not do what they say they're gonna do. There is not gonna be crossfeed, and that's gonna be the failure point during this flight. You see, the fourth engine's tanks, for some reason or another, decided to drain first. That's why we had switched to the alternate tank on the fourth set first. But that means it's gonna drain first, and I can't, I guess, Maybe I needed to turn on some cross-feeding pumps, but I had failed to do that. Uh, this was getting a little bit late also for me, so 
you know, uh, and I have to turn on the lights too, adjusting the floodlights for the cockpit. But yeah, I think I had forgotten to turn on the crossfeed pumps or something like that because the crossfeeding didn't happen. And as a result, the fourth engine, which is currently only being fed by those fourth set of tanks, is going to conk out. And that'll be closer to New York. So here we are getting closer to New York after a very long flight so far. I'm taking a look at the GPS there. And taking a look at the fuel situation as well because you can see the fourth tank is really low. I'm setting the nav 2 because I no normally don't use it but I actually have JFK memorized. It's 115.9 so I decided to put it in and get the DME readout. Uh, which you do by clicking that there. So now we've got uh, the distance and our speed. Our speed went much faster. For the first half of the trip we had a crosswind, for the second half we had a tailwind, so that boosted us. Otherwise it would have taken longer to get to New York. Uh, probably more uh, more than an 8 hour flight. So anyway, yeah, we're running out of fuel. But we do still have a little bit of fuel in the main tank for the fourth set. So that's worth pointing out. We get some more lights as we get closer and closer to New York. And I think right about here, yep, there goes the fourth engine. So, yep, it's out of fuel. And so, yeah, we need to figure that out. Of course, it's still on autopilot, so the autopilot is compensating right now. And uh, again, we still have a little bit of fuel in the main tank. So I make note of that. I was just disappointed that the cross feeding didn't seem to work and I had set the cross feed to 3 to 4 again to see if that would help but yeah it, uh, when I switch it back to the main tank the fourth engine actually starts again which I'm not too sure it's supposed to do but it did and then I switched it back to the alternate tank and it went dead again so I kept that in mind that I could right before landing uh, turn on, uh, switch to the main tank and maybe the engine would go back on and that'll make it easier to land of course if we can just use the uh, 77 pounds I think it was in the main tank for the fourth engine but I decided not to do that, I just decided not to play that trick since it didn't seem very legitimate we are of course slowing down at this point and so I just turn off the autopilot because otherwise you keep trying to hold the same altitude at a slower and slower speed and it won't be good now immediately when I disconnected the autopilot it banked really hard of course because we are missing an engine but not quite so of course because when you think about it the trim that the autopilot had set should still be active but it wasn't which is weird so I don't know exactly how the autopilot works in this uh, where it was holding it steady so the trim should still be there but I had to retrim it and restabilize it and so I did the problem is that every time you change the amount of throttle, you have to trim it again because, you know, in the, the bank direction, because the balance is different again. Anyway, here is New York, unfortunately, New York City, but unfortunately, we didn't have all the nice buildings apparent. You can see there's Manhattan there, but it's all dark. They don't really have city lights except for the roads of course which was disappointing but anyway that is how it is and I could see JFK there that was quite clear we're still at 10,000 feet and as I cross below 10,000 feet I turn off well, not turn off but go to the lower low superchargers instead of the high superchargers I shouldn't say turn them off so yeah that's why I'm flicking there the superchargers setting them to low instead of high and so we have lower power and can slow down, which we do. And here I am turning towards JFK. John F. Kennedy International Airport ahead of us. And I, I'm fairly low here, lower than I ought to be at this distance, but I just wanted to get set up well and sort of stable because I had to retrim it, of course. Uh, so I decided to do it at a fair distance and make sure I had everything properly set up. Still it's hard of course, we still have one engine out and so I was managing that. And here we are touching down with the one engine out. 
Okay. And there you have it. Uh, we have landed at JFK International after a fairly long flight, and uh, certainly the longest flight I have done in flights in 2020. I had always wanted to do it in this plane, uh, ever since I got it, of course. Uh, so it is about time. It's tough for me to schedule a long flight, <laughs> right? Uh, and stuff these days. Easier, easier back in my school days. But here we are. I did uh, get taxi permission and got my little taxi ribbon and taxied it to a gate and gingerly and here we are at our parking spot and you uh, I didn't feather the engine I have to uh, I didn't really go through the proper procedures for having one engine out either I'll have to admit that it was late uh, for me it was already past midnight well past midnight uh, at this point so and I'm an early riser, early sleeper. Okay, here I am just shutting it down, uh, killing all the fuel to the engines, and then of course uh, doing the battery after I set things a little bit there and turning off the battery. And then we have the end of flight dialogue. There you have it, yep. Uh, seven hours and 54 minutes, and you can see uh, the proportion at night versus day. And yep, so yeah, it's a very enjoyable plane, especially because you have to monitor things and make sure things are kept in line, uh, though the autopilot works wonderfully, frankly. Uh, that I didn't have to worry about too much, but other things, just making sure the needles are all in the right position and keeping an eye on things makes it enjoyable. But do I have the patience to bring it across the Atlantic and really push its range? That's a tougher question. I don't know if I'll ever have the kind of time to do that, especially since you do have to pay attention to it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that would be an interesting one. But for now, I have managed to cross the country with it, so there is that. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.